Before we begin, I just want to clarify that this is not a tutorial on how to use OPA in solves. If that's what you're looking for, go watch Ari's tutorial, which I've linked in the description. This video is just going to be an explanation of some of the theory behind OPA. Bolal parity avoidance, usually shortened to OPA, is a technique for 4x4 that's been recently seen a significant rise in usage. As a result, some of you may be wondering how this technique actually works, so I wanted to offer some level of explanation here today. To start, we're going to examine what causes OLL parity in the first place, because by isolating the cause, we can prevent those conditions from being met during an actual solve, which results in avoiding OLL parity. In order to examine the cause of OLL parity, we're going to think about the cube as a composition of cycles. So each piece type can freely cycle with other pieces of its same type. So for example, with these centers relative to the solve state, we need to cycle this to here, to here. So we have a three cycle of centers that needs to be completed. Here's a three cycle of wings. And here is a three cycle of corners. To any blind solvers, this should be an extremely familiar concept because we structure our memo around the cycles necessary to bring the cube to the solved state. This concept comes with its own definition of parity. Each piece type can collectively have either even or odd parity based on the number of two swaps necessary to bring the pieces to the solved state. So in the solved state, because we need zero two swaps to bring each piece type to the solved state, they all have even parity. Additionally, if we do a three cycle, here's a wing three cycle, we need to do two two swaps to bring it to the solved state, which means this also has even parity. However, if we bring the cube into a state where the wings need one two swap to be brought to the solved state, this state has odd wing parity. Let's take a look at this puzzle state right here. The entire cube is solved except for this two swap of wings in UF. Because the wings require one two swap to bring them to solved, the wings have odd parity on this scramble. But another way to characterize this state is as being the pure OLL parity case. As a result, we can start to form a link between OLL parity and wing parity. To show this more rigorously, let's look at each type of move and how they affect the wing parity. First off, let's look at a full rotation, such as an X. On the right side of the cube, we have two four cycles, this to this to this to this, as well as this to this to this to this. Same thing on the left side of the cube, as well as two four cycles on the M slice with here to here to here to here as well as the same thing on the L slice. Because these cycles are all coming in pairs, they all cancel each other out with respect to parity, and so rotations can be shown to preserve the wing parity. Now let's look at an outer turn, such as an R. We can see that the wings have done one four cycle, here to here to here to here, as well as a second four cycle, with these wings. This pair of four cycles, they again cancel each other out with respect to parity, so a quarter turn of the outer layer preserves parity. A half turn of the outer layer can be trivially shown to preserve parity because you can view this as two quarter turns. Finally, let's look at an inner turn, such as an R wide. But we're actually going to simplify this to just an R slice so that there are fewer pieces moving. And the reason we can do this is that we know that an outer turn will preserve parity. So looking at the wings, we have here to here to here to here. That's the cycle that was performed. But that's a four cycle, which requires three two swaps, meaning that the inner turn alters parity. And it's also the only turn that does so. Because outer turns are parity preserving, this means that once the cube is reduced to the 3x3 stage, the wing parity cannot be altered. 
So if I scramble this cube, we know that the wing parity of this scramble is odd, and it will also produce OLL parity. This is a key reason why OLL parity and wing parity are two manifestations of the same phenomenon. Because inner quarter turns are the only type of turn that affects the wing parity, the wing parity of a scramble can be equivalently described as the number of inner quarter turns needed to solve the puzzle. For example, if you take a solved 4x4 and perform a scramble with an even number of inner quarter turns, that scramble will have even wing parity, and there is no solution you can perform that would take an odd number of inner quarter turns. That's mathematically impossible. What this means for OLL parity avoidance is that we need to perform the correct amount of inner quarter turns before 3x3 stage, because if the wrong number of inner quarter turns are performed, that manifests as OLL parity, and all OLL parity algorithms will have an odd number of inner quarter turns in order to correct this problem. So, from a scrambled state, we can determine the wing parity of the scramble somehow. This is the main challenge of doing OPA in an actual solve, and it's where people get stuck with implementing it. I've pre-traced the scramble, and we know the parity is odd here. So if we start solving and keep track of how many inner quarter turns we perform, we can force the parity to be even by the time we get to 3x3 stage. So, like I said, we start with odd. We'll pair up the center, make it even. It's odd now. Even, odd. Even, odd. I do yao, so we'll just do that. That's a half turn, so it doesn't change our parity. It's still odd. It's still odd. Now we'll start with our last four centers. So it's odd right now, even, odd. And in most reduction-based methods, solving the third center is the point where the parity locks, so to speak, and it won't change until 3x3 three three stage. So in solving our third center, we want to take care to make the parity even once we've solved it. Since it's odd right now, if we do this half turn, our parity will be odd and will be guaranteed OLL parity on the solve. But if I go back here, do one quarter turn to flip the parity and put it in, now we're guaranteed not to have OLL parity on this solve. So if we finish up the solve, You can see that we have no OLL parity. Thanks for watching, everyone.